Know a lot about golf. Well, we're waiting. And it is time for us, those weekend golf guys. Uh, follow along with me now. I am John Ashton in a studio. He is Jeff Smith in the golf cave at Timbergate Golf Course in Edinburgh, Indiana. I've done the math. Distance right. between us, 113 miles. You could say that for the past six or seven years, we actually invented this whole concept of social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. For no other That's reason other than we don't like to hang out talk, together. We are not in the same room. No. How many times do you think we've actually done our show from the same room? It's under 10. Oh, yeah, about maybe five or six. A couple, yeah. couple times when uh, you were in town, a couple times when we met up at French Lick, and a couple times when we were yeah. at the PGA show. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to – you know what? That's right. I forgot about the PGA show once. Those are fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are, those are a good time. That was a yeah, good time. Those are – Except it was very noisy. Yeah. It was hard to, hard to get the background noise out of those – yeah, you know, and there's always rooms, that one lots of people. older blonde guy that's always rummaging around us and <laughs> yeah. making us irritated. And wants to get on the radio, you know? <laughs> yeah, he's always trying that. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with him. Well, he just needs us to help promote him. That's also people who start listening to him, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. love, love you, Frank Bassett from Golf Talk America. Love you, buddy. <laughs> Oh, that's who that guy is. Yeah, that's who he is. Yeah, tall, tall, I skinny, forgot. I... blonde guy. What's with that will work for food sign that he's always carrying around? <laughs> yeah, and it works too. That is. Actually, he he put that away. It didn't work. It's will work for scotch. That's the, the sign he holds up now. So he's got is that, that going it? on. Hey, you okay. know what we're going to talk about today? Not just not just friends of ours, but we're going to talk about a, a uh, experience I have just had recently this week and being fitted for a driver. I have never been fitted for clubs before in my life. And this was an experience. Oh. Let me tell you, this was an experience. And I got numbers, man. I got numbers. And you know what, Jeff, you're going to actually tell me what they mean. You know, please. Oh, that's there's, good. Uh, yeah. That's We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about also there's a a, a new uh, a golfer who is delving into the CBD thing. This This whole CBD oil uh, for golfers is is a trend that is catching on big time, man. Yeah, we're throwing away the ibuprofen and bringing out the the big guns, man. You know, it's it's good for the aches and the pains and what ails you. No, really, I I took a little bit of this guy's stuff prior to getting fitted, and my knees didn't hurt at all. And I was there for two hours swinging a driver constantly. Man, that takes a lot out. Really? Of you. Yeah, it takes a lot out of you. We're going to talk yeah. about that. We're going to go over some numbers. We're going to see what it is to get fitted for a club when we come right back. We are those weekend golf guys, so do not move. I want to talk to you about my wife. She is a critical care nurse, works four 12-hour shifts a week at the hospital. Her knees hurt. And she's tried the Icy Hots and the Bengays of the world only to say, yeah, I got 20 minutes of relief. That pain is right back again. So I got this bottle of stuff in the mail. This is Omax Health. It's called CryoFreeze CBD. They developed it at Omax Health. It's a non-prescription, triple-action pain relief roll-on, specially formulated to block pain receptors, reduce inflammation, and improve muscle and joint flexibility. All right, so she rolled it on and went to work. Came back in the morning, and you know what she said to me? It works! Olmax Health is offering our listeners 20% off a full bottle of Crypto Freeze Pain Relief Roll-On, plus free shipping. Now, the discount also applies to anything, any product, site-wide on their website. Just go to OmaxHealth.com today. Enter the code WEEKEND and take advantage of this incredible savings. That is O-M-A-X Health. Dot com and enter the code WEEKEND. You'll get 20% off cryo freeze and anything else site-wide. OmaxHealth.com. You know, golfers, we love gear. It's a big part of our game, and we put a lot of time and, and, let's face it, a lot of money into getting it right, whether we're researching our next irons or maybe even testing out some new tees. But there is one important piece of equipment that we overlook, your golf cart battery. Most of us don't consider the quality of our battery. That That is until it dies, and we're stranded out in the middle of the course. That's why we want you to know about the Relyon Insight battery, the intelligent golf cart battery that utilizes intuitive software for better performance and fewer disconnects. The Relyon Insight battery is powered by lithium, not lead acid, so it charges faster, provides more range, and requires no maintenance. It's a drop-in replacement, so just connect and go. You can learn more at RelyonBattery.com slash GolfGuys and use our special promo code GolfGuys for 10% off. Plus, you'll get a free charger when you order two or more Insight batteries. Again, that's RelyonBattery.com slash GolfGuys and use promo code GolfGuys. And no other lithium battery compares to Relyon's. 
Order yours today. And thanks for hanging. We are back. I'm John Ashton in studio. He is Jeff Smith, Timbergate Golf Course, Edinburgh, Indiana. We are far apart. We are social distancing, just as everybody says. And unless and until the powers that be where you are come down and say, don't move, shelter in place, like they have in San Francisco. <laughs> I mean, I got some emails from some uh, golf courses in San Francisco, uh, regrettably closing, which we don't yeah. understand because golf yeah. courses are like one of the one of the safest places you can be in times like this. You know what? I understand that. I had a buddy of mine. Matter of fact, friends of the show, uh, Mr. James Hong, uh-huh. uh, out in uh, Long Island, New York. Uh, he is now um, out of work for a few days or a few weeks. They, cl- um, they closed down where out there too? They have shut down. Yeah, yeah. the city that he the, – that owns the, the municipality that runs the, that mm. runs, owns the golf right. course that, right. that he's working said, nope, we're done, and uh, you don't get to teach. I'm fortunate because uh, there's a whole parking lot full of golf or full of cars and a whole golf course full of golfers here today. Yes, at Timbergate, and I'm still busy because uh, the people that run this place have not uh, have not had a problem because they understand that golf's a great great place to do some social distancing at the same time have a good time and get healthier. Exactly, because you're only a handful of people around you at a time anyway. Uh, three others, if I recall. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, right now we got some walkers and we got some guys riding carts. You know what they're doing? Single carts. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Doing a little of that. And, um, you know, you're gathering on the tee box, uh, but you're not all that close. And um, you're still able to uh, to poke fun at your friends and have a good time. Yeah. And then you gather again on the green. And the rest of the time, you're really not all that close to each other. Exactly. And if you don't want to take and your hat off and shake hands when time. you're done, don't. You know, it's that simple. Yeah. Don't don't shake their hands. You know, right? Do the you old just give them the old thing. nod, give a tip of the cap. Yeah. You that's know, it. Give them, a, give them a little putter bump. Right. Get it. You know, reach out. You do a little putter handle bump together. Boom, you're there. And it's it's over. Right. That's all there is to it. It's phenomenal. This is something right. that I think we need so, to preach to the powers enough, that be. We're asking me all the time, how am I still, how am I still teaching? Mm-hmm. Well, it's really simple. Um, my teaching is not necessarily hands on to begin with. Right. I'm in person. I am nearby, but there's times where it's time to, to, to put your hands on and show people. But you know, I've always done this where I'm able to do it, uh, verbally and also visually. And sometimes I can just, reach over and go, no, that little spot right over there, this thing, do this, that, the other thing. Can you feel that? And then they're doing it and I'm still six ish feet away. Yeah, exactly. So I, I'm not having any trouble at all. My schedule's still full. You don't have to be close to, uh, to enjoy the, the whole golf situation at all, which you have proven on many no. an occasion. You can teach from the other side of the room because it's all on video. You, the representations are there. You've got the cameras, you got the track man, men, whatever. And yep. um, you got the screens. You can see what's happening. Uh, you don't even have to shout. I mean, you know, you can just talk, and it's it's there. No, but I well. did with you because it was fun. Uh, well, yeah, and you were you know getting ticked. <laughs> what well, the hell yeah. are you I mean, doing? It was that whole thing where you're holding on to the wrong end of the club. Was, <laughs> you know, getting to the point where like, okay, this is not going to work. <laughs> exactly. As That's a matter it. of fact, do you know I have found the video? I'm sorry, I have found it. <laughs> Did I not pay you enough to lose it for all? No. For good? No, did not. And so the beauty of this is it's about to wind up on our Facebook page because I found it. And I'm going to – I think I'm going to put the raw, unedited version uh, out there. Okay. For Gee, thanks. all of our friends <laughs> out there in, in listener land all over the country. <laughs> and uh, yeah. to see this – Thing of beauty, as a matter of fact. Yeah. As, as a matter of fact, I even found the video, the entire raw video of my conversation slash lesson with intrepid producer Mark. Oh, put that one up. That one is much, much more um, educational than is mine. Yeah. And John, you do know what they say about the camera, right? It adds 20, and 20 30 pounds. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. I think it's only five, no. really. I think no, that's all. I think it's, it's 20 or 30. In your case. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, it's 20 or 30. Absolutely 20 or 30. Yeah, that's a ticket. But I just can't understand, though, why, why municipalities. I, I guess they're they're afraid that their people are going to catch 
the virus or, or something and everybody needs to stay indoors. But indoors, all you're doing is recirculating air. If you have any of the virus or any germs at all indoors, your chances of, of catching something are much higher than if you're outdoors. I would imagine. I would assume I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not a medical professional, but I'm married to one. So, you know, sometimes I pick it up through osmosis. But I would think being outdoors. I think sometimes would, pick I, it up because it's actually said in your house and beating yeah. it into your head going, hey, dummy, this is the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, I have of, that. I have that at my house as well. Yes, you do. Where I have a medical professional mm -hmm. uh, that my, my wife is uh, very smart. Yes. And knowledgeable about all of this stuff right here. Yes, indeed. And she keeps asking me, am I still busy? Am I still busy? Because she's kind of taking the, the temperature of the, the, the room of the, you know, taking the temperature of the room. She's taking like a straw poll to go, how, how are people reacting? Like, yeah. <laughs> my schedule's still full. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and again, it, it's gone. And she tells it's, me, of course, you know, open the doors, run the fan, mm -hmm. blow all the air out, circulate yeah. it, you know, change it around because you don't want that stale air in there. Like, exactly. You know, the outdoors is so much more healthy uh, than indoors. And again, the, the jury's out, but I hear conflicting reports on how hot it has to be before this virus actually dies. But uh, people keep saying after 80 degrees, the virus will be dead. If not ineffective, mm. I don't know. So let's hope because those days are coming. So that's an interesting thought. That's an interesting thought. So how about all the golf courses in Florida right now? Mm -hmm. In that case, that would be the healthiest place to be. It let's go be. play. Yeah. <laughs> can you stop? Let's go. And, I got some friends in West Palm. Can you stop and pick me up on right. the way by? I got some friends in Naples. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I got, I got an idea. I'm going to, you know, instead of trying to get on a tin can airplane, and go, I'm going to drive, mm -hmm. and, and I'll stop by, pick you up, strap you to the roof of the car, <laughs> so that way we can social distance, and you can be outdoors and being healthy, yeah. and then we'll just hightail it down to Florida. Sounds good. Or or we can just go to the Carolinas. You know, last last week we discussed oh, yeah. locally the, the top five golf courses in the Carolinas, and um, a couple of them are a little pricey, yeah. but a couple of them aren't. And, and one, truly a favorite of mine. Yeah. You know. But friend of the show, right? Mark Brown, golf professional at Tobacco Road, mm -hmm. right? He is uh, he's the director of golf there and uh, runs a great a great show there. But truly, one of my one of my all time favorite fun golf courses to play. It's a challenge on every shot. You look at it and you're like, man, I got to do what? Yeah. This is awesome, yeah. right? Yeah. What a great what a great place. But anyway, so we yeah we talked about all kinds of fun golf courses in North Carolina. But you know, there's one that I used to work at. In mm -hmm. Greensboro, North Carolina. Okay. Called Bryan Park. And they have two golf courses there that will absolutely blow your mind on how beautiful they are. The players course and the champions course. And realistically, if you can get out on the champions course where the sun is going down on the backside, you know, if you can time your tee time so that you're on like somewhere between 11 through 16 when the sun is low in the afternoon, mm -hmm. you won't find a better scene. You won't see it. Cool. I don't care where you go. You will not find a, a prettier place to play golf than uh, playing golf on Lake Townsend in Greensboro, North Carolina. It's fantastic. See, and it, it's it's not that far. What else are you going to do? You're stuck at home with the kids, right? You can't right. go to work. Kids can't go to school. So, um, you know, if you have the wherewithal, you have the time, definitely. Uh, pack up and – You know, I, I got – Stay outdoors. I got one more golf course to talk about North Carolina because, you know, we, we dabbled, but there's so many great ones, right? Mm -hmm. I told you about some of them, but boy, there's one in Pinehurst that I'm in love with. Uh -huh. <laughs> it, it's so good. It's a private club. So hold, get, find a member. Yeah. Whatever you do, go to Forest Creek. They've got 36 holes of beauty. They got uphills. They got downhills. They've got everything that you ever wanted. And they have the coolest um, locker room known to mankind. <laughs> I promise you, you won't find it a more interesting, large uh, locker room. It's part of the event of going to that place. Okay. Forest Creek. It's in Pinehurst. It's unbelievable. Cool. Well, put that on. Thing. Put that on your list, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, mm -hmm. Earlier in the week, I was actually uh, fitted for a driver, professionally and in depth. Man, it took almost two hours. It, it tires your butt out doing that. We're going to talk about it when we come right back. Don't you move. We are those weekend golf guys. You want to see how great a golf instructor Jeff Smith really is? It's very easy. $5golfclub.com. The number $5golfclub.com. 
It seems to be happening so much more often now when I play golf, but I'll get done with 18 holes and I'll come home and, you know, sit down, relax a little bit. And suddenly I get up and the knees hurt and it lasts for a couple of days now. So Omax Health, one of our sponsors, has been telling me to use this CryoFreeze CBD roll-on that they've developed for pain. So I said, well, I've got some. I might as well. What the heck, huh? It's triple action pain relief roll-on specifically formulated to block pain receptors to reduce inflammation and improve muscle and joint flexibility, which is exactly what I needed. It's a 100% natural CBD-powered remedy. It works its magic within 10 minutes of application. That's what it said on the label, and that's actually what happened. And it lasts for about eight hours at a time. It's called CryoFreeze. Go to omaxhealth.com and enter the code WEEKEND. That is O-M-A-X health.com. Enter the code WEEKEND and you will get 20% off CryoFreeze and anything else site-wide. Everybody's got a box. You got a box of razors they'll send you every month. I got a box of this they'll send you every month. I got a box of that they'll send you every month. But only Bespoke Post has a box of awesome that they will send you every month. And that is not hyperbole. You go to boxofawesome.com. They will ask you a few questions. They will get a feel for who you are, what you're into. Every month, they will send you an email saying, hey, we got this box for you, and in it will be X, Y, and Z. It'll cost less than 50 bucks, but guaranteed to be worth over 70 If you're not feeling it, just say, Ugh, I'm not really into this stuff, guys. So I'll pass. Catch me next month. It's that easy. Boxofawesome.com. You want this stuff, trust me. It's stuff you never even think that you should have, but when you see it, you go, oh, wow. I've always wanted this. I just never knew it. It's a box of coolness. It's a box of awesome. Every month, boxofawesome.com. Use the code WEEKEND. Get 20% off your first box. Of course, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash golf guys. We would love it if you were to go there and like us. We'd love it even more if you'd go there and follow us, facebook.com slash golf guys. And welcome back. We are those weekend golf guys. I'm John Ashton. He is Jeff Smith. You know that we are nowhere near close to each other at the moment because we don't want to make each other sick. I don't want to be. Sometimes he says watching my golf swing makes him sick, but that's, you know, that's another topic for another day. I want to talk right now about getting fit. This is the difference between buying a suit off the rack and having one tailored for you. Not custom built specifically. Oh, you're you're not talking about working out, getting fit. Oh, no, no, no. Getting fit for clubs. Exactly. Getting measured. Okay, Okay, good. (laughs) I, I didn't know whether you were going off the deep end on us or not. Oh, no, no, no. You don't, don't ever have to worry about that. Went out to the uh, the new facilities here in, in town of Club Champion. They are professional club fitters, and that's all they do. They fit the yeah. clubs to you, and then they will yeah. custom build the club that works for you. They have scads of heads, scads of shafts, scads of grips. Everything can be mixed and or matched to fit what you want to do. Yeah, it's crazy. I've I've been to one, yeah. and the guys are w- really well trained. They are, this and they're guy. really up on the on who's got what shaft and what it's going to do, and how's it going to play in that head or this yeah. head. They're going to fit you with whatever is the best one for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're not going to go. We're going to start with this brand and make it work. No, they're going to start with you and make something be the best fit for you. That's what I like. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And the first thing he did is he had me take about five or six swings with my current driver which mm-hmm. he had never heard of, you know, it being the Dean Knuth high heat driver. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah, the high heat. So That's right. He um, he had me do that and got the numbers. Mm-hmm. And then he went and he said, okay, judging from what these numbers are, and what's a good smash factor? If you could get your smash factor to be one four five with a driver, that would be awesome. Okay, mine was one four six. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you. My driver head speed was 83, but my ball uh-huh. speed was 119. Yeah, that's fantastic for an 83-mile-an-hour club head speed. Yeah. They, the first thing he hooked me up with was the new uh, Callaway Maverick. How about that? And he put me on three different shafts. The first shaft, mm-hmm. it was a Fujikara shaft, I believe, of, of some sort. But, man, it felt good. It looked good. The, the smash factor and the speeds were very consistent, but the distance, the carry distance was about 10 yards further. And the total distance was about 17 yards further. It was pretty How cool. How about that? Yeah, that was pretty cool, man. And, and your eyes went big. <laughs> yes, it did. Was, yeah. Your face. Matter of fact, you could he see a smile under that mustache? I believe he could. 
But you know, the did thing it of- curl up? That's what I really <laughs> want to know. Did it? Did it do the full, um, full Monopoly guy mustache and yeah, curl up? A little handlebar job? No, it didn't quite get that yeah. far. But uh, didn't there, quite that far. Huh? There will be uh, substantial numbers of photographs and videos of this whole procedure on our website. Uh, those weekend golf and uh, some, some on Facebook at facebook.com slash golf guys and stuff. The thing of it is, is had I done that, you know, had I gone to some place and said, uh, okay, I'm going to try this Maverick driver um, and I'm going to try it and I get those numbers and I go, man, it looked good. It felt good. I'll take it. But no, you're not allowed to do that there. They have to make sure. And they went and tried two other shafts with that Maverick head neither of which could come close to the numbers because they were a little more whippy and a little lighter. And you know, you had mentioned uh-huh. about your student who got the irons with the lighter shafts and couldn't hit them. Uh, right. It's the same thing, man. That lighter shaft, it just didn't feel right, didn't look right, and the numbers uh-huh. were bad. And I kept pulling everything to the left with that shaft. So mm-hmm. then they say, okay, well, let's try this shaft with the uh, the new TaylorMade. Numbers didn't even come close. Mm-hmm. Tried a couple of different shafts. The same numbers didn't come close. The only thing, he tried the Ping G410. Right. Again, the numbers were not anywhere near the same. The only other head that came close was the uh, Titleist TS2. Uh-huh. And that came close, but still the Callaway was better for me. Because, for you. Yeah. He, yeah. He said that smash factor number was great. And then, and then man, they, they take the shaft and make sure that you got exactly the shaft that feels right and works right for you. And then, man, they even, what grip do you want? Mm-hmm. And they went through the whole thing. I got leather grips on it, man. Politically really? incorrect, but very, very tacky and nice. I loved it. Wow. That's that's what we did with that. And I just got to tell you, man, that the, the whole situation is just something that I highly recommend to everybody. Now, you fit clubs. You've done it for your students. You know a lot of club fitters. Why do so many of us just settle? Because this is so much better, man. So much. Well, better. Well, there's a there's a few reasons that I know of, right? I I know some guys who work at Club Champion. I know some guys in Cincinnati who work for um, Miles of Golf. Uh, I know um, guy in Dallas, Texas, used to work for me at place in at the Dallas Golf Company. And I know uh, also a friend of the show, Kirk Oguri, mm-hmm. um, top 100 teacher um, or top 100 club fitter from New York, who actually I took my son to go get fit, and they all tell me the same story. The people who really come to get club fit are absolutely the, the people who are actually serious about their about their improvement mm-hmm. and are willing to look at every aspect of it. And they realize this is going to cost me a little bit more money mm-hmm. than just snapping a new one off the shelf because they've found out that just grabbing a new one off the shelf like that all the time has not produced what they're after. It, it's too spinny. It's too high. It's too low. Um, they can't hit it in the middle of the face or it's too light or it's too heavy. And yet they already spent their money on it and they're not doing themselves any favors. So they've learned. Mm-hmm. They've learned that doing it the right way, you'll keep this driver longer than any other driver because it won't fail you because it's, it's well fit yeah. for you. Yeah. My son is a, is a great example of that, right? He is, um, like everybody, susceptible to people who hit it past him because he's, you know, he's not <laughs> that big a kid. Uh-huh. Um, but yet he still pops it out there 280 to 300 yards. But he's on a college team full of kids who are hitting it farther than that. So what does he do? He goes and he tests other clubs against his because he knows his is the one that fa- that matches him. Mm-hmm. It was fit to him. Right. And he still keeps it because he keeps finding out that none of the other ones match up to his. Right. He can't hit another one any better than he hits his at all. So he's he even is susceptible to that. But what he does is he now tests other clubs and says, wow, this is not it. I can't just grab this club with this shaft because it says – 60 gram X. Well, guess what? There's a lot of different versions of those and in different heads. And all of a sudden he never comes up with the same performance because this one that was fit to him was tuned to him. And that's exactly what you just had yeah. from club champion tuning that driver to you. Yeah. And the spin rate, which is something I neglected to mention earlier, 1800. And what was it launching at? Uh, oh, and that's another thing too. Um, what was the launch angle? I don't remember the launch angle, but it's a 12 degree head. So you're probably launching it at 13, 14 degrees, uh, mm-hmm. maybe 15 degrees. Mm-hmm. Did he tell you how much you're swinging up at it? I'm sure the number is in there. I didn't I didn't uh, remember it. I'm and sure it is. I'm waiting. It's for okay. But anyway, email, so but... clubs, uh, ball speed plus launch angle plus uh, spin rate 
tells me an awful lot about how how your ball's going to fly. Mm-hmm. And if you picked up 17 yards, that was like carry distance 17 yards, wasn't it? Yes. It was probably more than that overall. Yeah. yeah. And the reason we talk about carry yards, because we don't really know what you're going to land it on, John. I know, exactly. Especially in this in, in Kentucky, we're talking, it's, it's like sponge, especially since he referred to it as Seattle East, because it's very wet around here. Yeah, that's so right. You don't get a whole lot of Yeah, roll. you got that right. Yeah. All right, so that's what we talk about when we're fitting people and we're, we're talking about how far they're going to fly it in the air before mm-hmm. it hits the ground. Right. Because that's a measure of what you produced. It's not a measure of anything else because we don't know whether you're going to land it on the airport runway or, you know, or the highway next to the hole you're playing. I'm right. sorry. You didn't mean to bring that up again. <laughs> Sore subject. I know. Um, or you're going to land it in the, in the water. And so, you know, one, <laughs> sorry, bringing that up again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't know what you're going to land it on there, John. So uh, we talk about carry distance all the time. Right. Exactly. You have to, that, that story I told you mistakenly told you about, <laughs> hitting a driver, pulling it a little bit left, and it hit a tree. <laughs> and and you know how when it hits a tree, you try to figure out where it went. And I asked, yeah. I asked the guy who was playing with us, I said, did you see where it bounced? He said, yeah, just hang on a second. And it was rolling back down the road next to the, <laughs> to the fairway. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> Here's the thing: you tell me these stories on the air, and I just file them away. I know for a different time. They use against you later. <laughs> you know, and and that's the fun part about this is all of our all of our listeners from from all over the place, whether they be our listeners in Pinehurst or listeners in in Tampa or, or listeners in Arizona or New York, uh-huh. they're all laughing now because yeah. of the story that. Yep. You so thankfully uh, have have given us. Well, they're they're laughing uh, not at me but next to me, so it's fun. That's but right, no, they I, are. I I highly recommend if if you have the wherewithal, if you have the time, because it took about two two hours to get it done, and you have the desire to actually have something that you know. See, the the, the best thing about this now is if I hit a bad drive, I know it's me, not the club. So <laughs> see, <laughs> downside to this, John, you've. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> now, you know it's you. Yeah, it's got to be me. <laughs> so much, so much for the ball and the tee and this club and all those other. But that things was one that you quick like question I wanted to ask you though: Is now will the ball I use affect any of those numbers? Yeah. So let's let's look at that. Like you just reduced your spin dramatically, mm-hmm. right? You your old driver used to spin quite a bit. Twenty six was what? yeah, and well, and and now you're down to what seventeen Eight, or 18? eighteen? Eighteen. Or 1,800. 15? Yeah. 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 So you look at that, and now the, the difference maker is, if if that's the case, what ball were you playing when you when you uh, tested that? Well, they're using Pro V1s in there. So in that, if you switch to an AVX, you'd get less spin, and it might not get in the air as much. It might roll out more, maybe, maybe. Mm-hmm. But I think that you're probably going to need to stay with that ball that you tested with because it got up in the air. Yeah, and that's what's important. Okay, cool. And it had enough spin to keep it in the air long enough. All right. Well, good. So go play the ball you tested with. That's what I will do. We got some more. We're coming because right back. Because you know that's a good ball around the green. It certainly is. We're coming right back. We're all those weekend golf guys. Don't you move. Hey, do me a favor while you're thinking about it right now. Why don't you go to thebusinessgolfcourse.com? Okay, what we're going to be doing, Jeff and I together, we'll be doing a one-day seminars on how to use golf effectively for business. We're going to concentrate on charity golf scrambles because you know there are many of them. I'm sure if you have a business, you've probably bought a sponsorship and put a team in one or two of them. We're going to show you how to make that a great business opportunity with a fantastic return on investment and a great way to build trust very quickly with customers and also prospects. TheBusinessGolfCourse.com I want to talk to you about my wife. She is a critical care nurse, works four 12-hour shifts a week at the hospital. Her niece heard. And she's tried the Icy Hots and the Bengays of the world only to say, yeah, I got 20 minutes of relief. That pain is right back again. So I got this bottle of stuff in the mail. This is Omax Health. It's called CryoFreeze CBD. They developed it at Omax Health. It's a non-prescription triple action pain relief roll-on, specially formulated to block pain receptors, reduce inflammation, and improve muscle and joint flexibility. All right, so she rolled it on and went to work, came back in the morning, and you know what she said to me? It works! Olmax Health is offering our listeners 20% off a full bottle of Crypto Freeze Pain Relief Roll-On, plus free shipping. Now, the discount also applies to anything, any product, site-wide on their website. Just go to OmaxHealth.com today. Enter the code WEEKEND and take advantage of this incredible savings. That is O-M-A-X Health. 
dot com and enter the code weekend you'll get 20 percent off cryo freeze and anything else site-wide omaxhealth.com and thanks for hanging and coming back we are those weekend golf guys uh, and i had gone earlier in the week and gotten my um, a, a fit for a driver and i was not prepared for the arduous <laughs> the arduousness uh, I mean, I got tired, man. It was like, they, I kept hitting balls. It was there for two and a half hours. And it's tiring to do that. And normally, in a round of golf, you don't take anywhere near as many swings as you take while you're getting fit. But And normally, my knees start to ache, and maybe an elbow will start to ache. We've got Jerry DeLuca with us here from Parform. And I want to tell hey, you, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry before, uh, before I left out for the uh, fitting... I chewed one of your uh, CBD gum samples you sent me. And when I was done, I didn't hurt. Coincidence? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's kind of what they're, that's kind of what they're using it for. Players out there, they're using it to help with anxiety, uh, reduce anxiety, focus, and to really help with relieve the pain, you know? Yeah. So, um, I think that that's, that'd be a perfect time to be able to see the difference. I well, hate to hear about that anxiety redu- reduction part of this because I got a lot of tournament players. Boy, they freak out a lot, especially the high school kids. Yeah. You know, they're under so much pressure. Exactly. And then, you know, they say obviously just chewing gum helps, but with the benefits of the CBD in there, which are going to calm your nerves and help you uh, kind of stay focused a little bit more. You know what I mean? I think that's a, I think that's a, actually probably one of the major reasons you see the guys and gals on tour actually using the, the gum is for that reduced anxiety, help with focus and really help dial them in, right? When they get to situations that, you know, maybe some of these guys haven't been in in a while or, you know, you get nerves. I mean, amateurs that get nerves on the first tee box, you're playing with a group of people you don't really know too well. Exactly. Yeah. Jeff, see, everybody does that. Don't laugh I'm at me, man. I've been through that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, be, I'm just one of those off. guys who just likes other people. Never, don't yeah. get freaked out around them. Yeah, I know. Well, that's, you know, when, when you're a good golfer, you don't have to get freaked out because you're showing off like you do when you already have uh, misgivings about, I mean, if you sit up to the ball on the first tee with no earthly idea where that ball's going to go, you get a little nervous. Yeah, you don't want to be the one topping it off the first tee when you just <laughs> met these guys. Exactly. Jerry DeLuca with, with Parform, how, how long have you been dabbling in the whole CBD thing? Because this seems to be a, a relatively new substance. I, I don't want to call it a miracle drug, but sometimes it acts like that, man. Yeah. So we, we, so Parform started out as a kind of a, a golf nutrition company. Um, I've kind of been in the golf nutrition. I've been in golf and the nutrition side of things for a long time and, and kind of saw that you know, golfers, they, you know, golf courses and everything, there was kind of a lack of nutrition for golfers out there. And so Parform actually started as a, as a golf nutrition product. We have a, you know, protein and a product out called the, the birdie bar. That's a healthy nutrition bar that, you know, that the golfers take. It's a good healthy snack to help them get through their rounds. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's kind of how we started. And then obviously CBD has became such a huge talked about product, you know, not just in golf, but in, like you said, in, in so many different other areas of, of, uh, benefiting people's lives. And so, you know, it kind of was a natural fit for us, right? Was to fall into that CBD category, being a nutrition product and, and understanding it quite a bit. And so, you know, that's when we kind of, you know, started talking to some manufacturers that we work, that we have known and worked with and, and ones that, uh, you know, hold up to the, the higher standards of GMP and things like that. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, kind of got into that realm. And then, you know, being a golf company, uh, par form, you know, we uh, obviously try to build our products, uh, we, in that, even in the CBD category that that's beneficial to the golfer. That's going to help a golfer with, you know, joint issues, uh, you know, pain, muscle soreness, things like that. Obviously, you know, a big benefit, like I said, is the anxiety relief and, and some focus. And so, you know, part of doing that is creating those products that is, you know, easy for a golfer to use, like the gum. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, obviously just creating these SKUs that, that fit the golfer's lifestyle. Again, m- many of us uh, recreational golfers get tired, not midway through the round. It would be so convenient if it was midway because you can always pick up something at the turn. But around the 14th or 15th hole, start lagging a little bit. Swing gets progressively yep. slower and um, your your desire, your yep. concentration and everything just kind of goes away. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and that's kind of why we, and that's how, that's kind of how we started, right? That's why we created the birdie bar was, you know, it was a healthy nutrition bar that gave the right amount of protein to help fuel your muscles to, to be able to finish the rounds with the right amount of carbs and then only having four grams of sugar, right? You don't get that insulin spike, um, <laughs> and energy reduction after that. So, you know, that's kind of how we, how we launched. And then, 
you know, the bar was built for golfers, obviously, in the fact that, you know, it's not rapid chocolate. You can put it in your bag and it can be 100 degrees outside, sit in your car, and you open it up and it's not melted all over the place. Right. It's, just, uh, <laughs> it's kind of ready to go. They freeze them. You can't, you know, you can't eat them frozen. You have to wait and there's a, a very small window of opportunity for yeah. a candy bar. <laughs> you, got, you better be quick. Yeah. You get between frozen and melted all over the place. When you're talking about nutrition with, with golf, what is important with nutrition? Because a lot of us, you know, we'll, we'll head out of the house, get an early tea time. We'll head out of the house and not worry about breakfast or anything like that. How important and what should you eat prior to a round of golf? Uh, I think nutrition is very important. I think people, people are out there spending hundreds of dollars, right, and, on golf balls and, and drivers and, and like you said, uh, going out there and getting fitted for new things. But, you know, I, I, I truly believe and, you know, there's stats that show it that, you know, if a golfer is not, uh, has the right, correct nutrition without playing, he'll actually shoot about 7% worse golf just from his body being fatigued, not having the, the enough, uh, fuel to finish, you know, his, with muscle endurance or, you know, you know, keeping his brain focused. And so, um, you know, I always say, you know what, like eat your normal breakfast or whatever you do when you leave the house. I mean, obviously I, I eat the birdie bar, but, uh, you know, grab something to eat to kind of give you the right, with some protein in it in the morning. And then try to, you know, really reduce sugar when you're on the golf course, right? I think a lot of people, you know, they make the turn, they grab a Snickers or they go grab a, a chocolate chip cookie. Seems like they're always at golf courses. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, you really just don't want the insulin spike. And so your body then it starts fatiguing right after it starts coming down from that insulin spike from the sugars. And so, you know, I always think, you know, most golfers should probably try to eat at least once, sometimes twice, depending on the size of what you're eating throughout a round of golf just to and that and that's just to keep your your body at you know optimal level um and functioning at, at peak performance you know what i mean and, you know that's to me why having the you know something like a you know whether it's a birdie bar or a protein bar or something that is easy to pull out of your bag you know while you're out playing and, and just give your body a little extra fuel and stuff like that to, to help finish those rounds and would you also recommend uh water rather than any of the uh sugary drinks you can get even though some of the sugary drinks are supposed to replace electrolytes and stuff that you lose by being outdoors yeah i mean i, w- I would go to water for sure before a lot of other things i mean something new that we actually have coming out with parform is a new product that'll be out in a, in a few weeks and it's called ace hydration um and it's actually just bcaas which are branch chain amino acids which actually are the building blocks to help fuel your muscle and keep your body from fatiguing um and then we have like coconut powder in it and electrolytes for all the hydration benefits that, and, and it's zero sugar and zero calories. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's a powder you can just add to your water. And, you know, that's kind of what, why we've created this product is to give somebody a good flavored to their water and something beneficial in their water. That's going to actually help keep them hydrated at a higher level um, and their body functioning at, you know, at its peak performance. Can you ever make any claims to uh, like make you uh, your, your immune system healthier or anything like that? Come on. In this day and age, we uh, need we that, don't. Jeremy. We don't. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> with everything going on right now, I mean, obviously, everyone's wanting something like that. For yeah. Sure. Work on that, okay? I mean, you got a laboratory there, right? I know. <laughs> we do. We got, we got a, well, we got guys that have laboratories we work with, so, um, but it's been fun, right? It's been, a, it's been a, it's been a fun experience for us as we've gone down this path. We're really the only golf, sports, nutrition, uh, kind of fitness, nutrition, lifestyle brand. And, you know, we have a bunch of players on the LPGA and PGA Tour that are actually using our products. And, and it's fun to hear the different, like you said, the different stories we hear from them out there performing at a higher level using our products. Uh, yeah. Kind of like you did when you're out uh, testing out the new driver. Yeah, exactly. I was expecting, you know, after a few swings to get the uh, the old pain in the knee, pain in the elbow. That seems to be where most of us old dudes uh, start to fall apart quickly. But uh, it didn't happen, Yeah, which was kind of nice. We have a new uh, a new CBD roll on product coming out, so I have to make sure I get you out some. And, oh, cool! And give that one a try. That one, that one, you kind of spot specific. You have certain areas: knee, joint pain, elbow pain. You can just uh, uh, roll it on, and you know it's kind of got that cooling agent, icy mm-hmm. hot kind of cooling agent feel yeah. to it, and uh, it has CBD infused into it as well that'll uh, absorb it. And you do that after the fact, or is it preventative? Uh, both you put okay. it on if you're starting to feel pain you can put it on and you'll, and you'll feel some benefits from it but uh you know the nice thing about it with, with the roll on you don't have to touch it so it doesn't get on your hand so you just kind of yes. can roll it on yeah. maybe two three times throughout a round if you're having some issues and, and uh play away yeah and you don't have to worry about getting greasy under grips or anything like that it's pretty cool jeremy exactly. deluca it's par form and um man you got a lot of good stuff so 
you were a golfer first or a nutritionist first? Uh, I was actually a nutritionist first. Okay. Uh, I did a lot with uh, a lot of pro athletes in, in all the different realms of sports and and uh, have been on the sports nutrition side of things for a long time. And, you know, golf kind of, as I've, you know, gotten a little older, uh, became uh, a huge passion of mine. And to see the lack of support for these uh these either weekend warriors or amateurs throughout the week. And then obviously they even at the, the mini tour tour and PGA levels was kind of something that I just thought that, you know, these guys, uh, you know, are, are top athletes that, and that need it. And we all are out there playing every week and that, you know, any extra help we can get and benefit to help us play better. Uh, it's there for you. Yeah. Well, I'm sure Jeff would agree with me here because Jeff sees all kinds of different levels of golfers in his uh, teaching but I would think that the golfers that predominantly play are, let's say, um, less in shape than any other athlete that you might deal with as far as nutrition and stuff goes. I think that's really true from the people who are, say, above 30 years old. Okay. Because the, a lot of the younger ones that I see, the, from the high school kids all the way up through their 20s, when they're coming to see me, they're they're – a little bit more serious about their golf games and they haven't yet slowed their body hasn't yet slowed down. Yeah. And they're still playing they basketball yeah. and baseball and tennis and all that other stuff too. Right. Which keeps me. But in about shape. the 30 year mark when they get older, get married, have children, have jobs that are settling down and their mm -hmm. body starts to go a little bit. That's, yeah. that's when I start to see uh, the ones that are uh, a little bit less in shape. Yeah. So about again, 30, 30 years is about what I see. As, that, as a group, that is. Jeremy, I would imagine that golfers probably need to rely on your stuff more than other "quote unquote" athletes would. Or pe um, people yeah, I mean, we see it, we see it a lot, right? Like I like I always say, uh, not that not, not that we don't love John Daly and, and players like that, but uh, you don't really see the guys coming on tour, or like he said, especially at the college level, um, out of shape anymore, right? There's yeah. no more guys playing golf with bellies at the at the optimal level or right? joining the PGA coming on right if you look at them all they're all in great shape they all train um, at most of the college programs they actually all train um, just like the football players kind of do with all yeah. the athletic departments and stuff like that and they're yeah. training three four days a week the weight rooms um, etc but yeah, yeah they're, hit, they're hitting the weight rooms um, you know the PGA obviously has the weight rooms uh, that they travel with for their players and mm -hmm. stuff like that so you know, and, and, and to his point, over 30, you know, I think it's getting better than it was, right? Because I think fitness, health and fitness is such a bigger part today. Yeah. Uh, each person, each person's lives, regardless of what sport you play, I think it's just became, becoming a bigger factor of everyone's lives. Um, and so to, you know, what we're trying to offer is, you know, if you're living that lifestyle or trying to live that lifestyle, we have something for you. You don't have to go play golf and eat a hot dog or you don't have to, uh, deal with as much pain and, and, um, you know, you can, you can still continue to live that lifestyle, um, just being a golfer and, and being an athlete. All right, Jeremy, shameless self promotion, man. How do people find your stuff? Um, just go, go to our website, uh, www.parform.com. And then we are also available, uh, on Amazon. Um, and then golf courses, right? If you've, uh, mm -hmm. If you've got our product, you like them, let your golf course know about it. And, and we're sold at most of the golf courses, uh, not the most, but a lot of the golf courses around the country and continue to expand. Fantastic. Jeremy DeLuca, Parform. And uh, check them out. they got the uh, CBD stuff and they've got uh, nutrition stuff. And, and that new water is coming out. So keep your eyes open for that uh, Ace Hydration product. It sounds pretty cool. Jeremy, thanks for spending some time with us here with those Weekend Golf Guys. Of course, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash golf guys. We would love it if you were to go there and like us, facebook.com slash golf guys. It seems to be happening so much more often now when I play golf, but I'll get done with 18 holes and I'll come home and, you know, sit down, relax a little bit. And suddenly I get up and the knees hurt and it lasts for a couple of days now. So Omax Health, one of our sponsors, has been telling me to use this CryoFreeze CBD roll-on that they've developed for pain. So I said, well, I've got some. I might as well. What the heck, huh? It's triple action pain relief roll-on specifically formulated to block pain receptors to reduce inflammation and improve muscle and joint flexibility, which is exactly what I needed. It's a 100% natural CBD-powered remedy. It works its magic within 10 minutes of application. That's what it said on the label, and that's actually what happened. 
and it lasts for about eight hours at a time. It's called CryoFreeze. Go to OmaxHealth.com and enter the code WEEKEND. That is O-M-A-X Health. Dot com. Enter the code WEEKEND and you will get 20% off CryoFreeze and anything else site-wide. And we are back for a few moments left. I'm John Ashton. He is Jeff Smith. And um, we are still far apart and spending some time socially distancing ourselves from each other. We've been doing that pretty easy for six, seven years, hasn't it? I know. I know, man. I think we started the trend and we're just going to keep on keeping on. Play golf. You know, you know, it's a great, you can go out by yourself. If you're afraid of catching germs from anybody, go and play golf alone. You don't have to worry about it at all. Hit balls, practice, get your, get your game on, right? Go get your short game in order. Yeah. Go get your putting, spend some time, put your headphones on, listen to our show and uh, laugh through your practice. Yes. You know, that's a good, that's a good (laughs) thought, right? Just don't videotape it and let Jeff see a copy of it because he'll use it against you at a later yeah. date. <laughs> oh, while I was it's been known to happen. The one thing that came as a shock to me, you know, I saw all of the, uh, the track man stuff on the screen and you know how they, they had all different color codes for the different shafts and the different driver heads and things mm-hmm. like that in the fitting. And then he said, much to my chagrin, let's watch the video of one swing. I was like, do did we- the did the laughter emojis pop up? <laughs> I said, did we have to? <laughs> yeah, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Trepper producer was Mark. Uh, Trepper producer Mark was there taping it, and I had my daughter there doing some photography work for the stuff we're going to put up on the website. But it was like, okay, so I'm watching myself, and I hate watching myself to begin with. But he showed. He said, great takeaway. He said, yes, that's rather daily esque. I went past parallel in the backswing, and he said, uh-huh. however, you're not doing what most people who go past parallel do. You're not moving your hands up to compensate for that. You're coming back on the same plane you went up on, and you actually were perfect when you got in center face contact, and boom. And I was like, hey, John Daly, you got nothing on me, except I was sober, and I felt pretty good about that. <laughs> What can I say? You know, I'm glad that you can think of it that way. <laughs> I really am. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's a good thing. It's uh, a good thing. You will be able to uh, to laugh along with Jeff to uh, my entire situation very shortly. Just go to thoseweekendgolfguys.com or facebook.com slash golfguys. All of the stuff will be there. So listen, wash your hands. As someone once told me, last week we, we worked on washing hands. Next week it's going to be shapes and colors. Okay? That's what we're going to work on. <laughs> Get fit if you need to get fit. Pick up the clubs you've got. Be all by yourself and be healthy. Go out. Play some golf. Our bonus content this week comes from two years ago, March of 2018. And we're going to revisit Jeff Smith's tutorial on short irons. Not wedges, but your short irons and how to use them effectively. Hey, it's us, those weekend golf guys. Back again, John Ashton in studio, along with intrepid producer Mark Hunter, Jeff Smith, uh, on his way to one of many golf caves that he has. I mean, this guy just has a, an embarrassment of golf cave riches. <laughs> He's everywhere. But uh, on the way back to Columbus, Indiana, after gallivanting throughout the southeast, uh, and still didn't get any good weather, but he's been throughout the southeast from Boca Raton up to uh, somewhere in Kingsport, Virginia, Kings Mills, Kings... Landing. Kings Mill Resort okay. in Williamsburg, Virginia. Yeah, as in like Colonial Williamsburg. You know, oh, that's right. Kings Landing's in Westeros, not in Virginia. I don't have HBO. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, here we go. We have said <laughs> that this is the season to break eighty. I don't care how old you are or aren't. I don't care how long you have or have not been playing golf. We are going to tell you what you need to do to break eighty. And one of the things you need to do is become totally conversant with and expert at using your short irons. Now, I'm not talking wedges. Uh, Wedges is a totally different animal that we have discussed uh, at ad nauseam for a long time. And we, we will get back to them, maybe even in the next segment when we run out of other things to talk about. But what I want to talk about is the shorter irons, the nines, eights, the sevens. Does the six count as a short iron or a mid iron? 
No, that's a mid iron. Okay. Seven sixes and fives are mid irons. Okay, so we're talking eight fives and nine. Fives are kind of long irons too, right? There's a blend, right? Yeah, eight and nine. Yes, yeah. eight nine. Don't forget. Hey, don't forget the P. Oh, the P. Right? That's right. They may the call P, it a wedge, you know, but it's okay. more a short iron, and it is a wedge wedge. Yeah. And, and the reason is, is because most of the time you're using it really is not necessarily around the green. Right. You know, it's it's more of a, a fuller swing kind of a shot. Yeah, you're 50, 40 yards. Where most people are using it. Yeah, and the reason is because they've cranked the loss on all these clubs so that they're, <laughs> they're really full swing clubs. I mean, how far do you hit your P right now, John? If you, if you made a full swing, you hitting that thing 120, 100, 125 yards? I, I use it for about 115 to 120, yeah. So that, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. So you talk about distances from, say, we're talking about like 140 yards yep. to 90 yards is really kind of where we're talking about. Yeah, That's a range where an awful lot of people have to get really good. The problem is is that they, they don't spend any time, you know, say, repeating it uh, at, a, at a good level where they, they make areas of, of a golf course property that you could go spend time doing that over and over again so that you could kind of perfect things. Mm-hmm. And um, they, they do those, those things, and they, they have them. Uh, most golf courses have these places, and most people will show up, and they'll put a basket down, and they'll, they'll drop, drop some balls on the ground, and they'll, and they'll, they'll hit those irons and they'll, until they're relatively short distances, you know, and, and they get some target practice. Mm-hmm. Those are called practice areas, are they not? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> I think it's one of those Where things those? that you could you could do that. <laughs> I think it's one of those things those, that John? we could extol the virtues of those. We could. I am no longer. I no longer fear the word practice. He still doesn't which, do which, it. Go. which is a first step. But he doesn't <laughs> fear the word. <laughs> For making right. progress. Out of those twelve step <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, We're on step two. <laughs> Let's learn how to spell it. Twelve step, 12 step program. Yeah. Step three: find where it is. <laughs> you know, you, you have magical techniques to um, to quickly get the hang of most every club in the bag. Any any real clever, um, magical, easy to follow? You know, with twenty seven cents worth of stuff you already have in the junk drawer, drills to uh, to get your shorter irons working better. You know, there's a lot of stuff that I do with people with their short irons, and most of the things that, that I find out people are really messing up their short iron play is this basic concept that they have of, oh, it's a short iron, therefore I need to play the ball back in my stance. Yeah. Yep. And the next thing you know, they're, they're sitting there, the ball's back, the hands are way to the, to the you know, their front leg, and all of a sudden the shaft is leaning so far forward, de-lofting the club, but it's also opening up the face. Because when you push a handle that far out in front of the face of the club, it tends to point the face to the, away from you. So people are hitting shots, and then they wind up coming down on top of them and shanking and hitting terrible golf shots because of awful ball position. Yeah. It's unbelievable to me how yeah. that thought that has permeated golfers for a long time, there's this big spectrum of where they should put their golf ball. Well, Jeff, and they always exaggerated everything. Jeff, even today, I mean, I have seen videos in the past week with instructors, bona fide golf instructors, counseling people to do it that way. Yeah. What, what interests me is, is if the context of the suggestion is to hit the ball lower, or is it to hit a bump and run shot, or is it to make a full swing shot out of it? And so, because, you know, what you're trying to do at that point is very different from one thing to the next. For example, if I'm trying to hit a full swing shot, my ball, if I have a P in my hand or a 9-iron in my hand, my ball, the back of the golf ball, will not be right of center. It'll be much like what we talked about, where you stand there and put your feet together, or I mean, mm-hmm. put your feet in the same place and make a bunch of swings. You'll find out your club first starts touching the ground, you know, right there at middle. Right. And then they'll put the bottom of the ball there, and then the back of the ball is more exposed to the club. And if you can sit there and make swing after swing after swing and realize where the, the, the entry point into the ground is, you'll find out it's not right of center. It's not back of center. Yeah. And all they're trying to do then is get people to hit the ball lower, and it'll go further right unless, of course, they twist the club further left, in which case they can hit it lower and a little farther 
But the trouble is, is that if they continue to do that, they're going to have humongous gaps in their game. Yeah, you don't want to panic. The yardage that you play, yeah. You, when you get the yardage that you play is different. Yeah. yeah, when when you get to, you know, if I get to 140, 130, 120 yards, not a problem. That's that's a full shot with your eight or a nine or a, or a P. But yeah, my problems are when I get to like 80 yards, 60 yards. You know, then they go, uh oh. <laughs> You know, th- yeah. yeah, this 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 could prove problematic. <laughs> you have to hit it far enough to get it to the green, yet you don't want to hit it so hard that it it rolls through or over or past or you don't. Lo and behold, you the, you don't want to embarrass yourself by hitting it short again. Yeah, go that's on. it right there. Is is people are avoiding certain shots mm-hmm. because they're they're wanting to avoid the embarrassment and the the psychological damage of. <laughs> Of leaving it short. Mm-hmm. And that's where I send people to the range to figure out ball position and how hard they're hitting something and kind of sense, is this a three-quarter swing that I'm still hitting hard, or is this a full swing, or is this, say, half a swing on the way back and full on the way through? How far is this, this thing going to go? And then you can kind of figure it out and, and go, all right, so let's say if I've got a half a swing but a, a full, full all the way through and I do this with a nine iron, how far is that thing going to go? And they'll find out, they're like, oh, well, that goes about 80 yards. As my full swing 9-iron goes about 130, but when I do about a half swing 9-iron, um, I can get about 80 yards out of the thing. And then it penetrates into the wind, and then they go, oh, I got a whole new shot here. Yeah. That's the, that's the key. Yeah, too many people try to, a little bit. try to try to keep, when you, when you get to like 80 or 70 yards, try to do one of those low, nice arc to it and have it hit in front of the – of the green and bounce on and roll up. Um, but you either, one of two scenarios happen is you hit it wrong and it goes, <laughs> or you hit it perfectly the way you should hit a chip <laughs> and it hits the fairway in front of the green and checks up. <laughs> Go, yeah. Now, why couldn't I hit that shot a little closer? It would have been perfect. So, and that's where I have people practice those shots, John. There's that word again. I want man. them to know how far they fly. Boy. Okay. <laughs> I, I want them to know how far they fly. Do you have anything to govern where your arms go? Any little doohickey you can wear that, you know, in the backswing your arm hits and can't go any further so you can get the feel for a three-quarter swing? I'll tell you what you can do. Okay. You don't even have to wear it because you're already kind of wearing it anyway. It's your shirt. Uh-huh. Can you imagine right at your armpit? You gather up the sleeve and the extra material uh, that's next, next to your body, and then you kind of clamp down on that extra material with your arm. So it kind of traps it into your armpit. Uh-huh. You do that on both sides, and then you make a swing feeling like you kept that, that material bunched up there under your armpit. Uh-huh. Next thing you know, your swing is shorter. Your arms are more connected to your body, so to speak, and not letting them fly all over the place, thus the club flying all over the place. So let's just make sure that you, uh, that you do that. So just, you know, you kind of put your hand up near your armpit a little bit and kind of gather up the extra material, you know, and kind of bunch it up, scrunch it up a little bit, and then stick your arm down and clamp on top of it and then hit the shot, keeping that thought that you've, you've trapped all that material in there. You'd be surprised at how good a, a half shot player you can be. Hmm. See again. Yeah. Don't go out and buy anything fancy schmancy. Be smart. All right, we're going to be yeah. real smart. We got uh, some more tips and techniques to make sure that you start early on your road to breaking eighty this season. When we come right back, we're all those weekend golf guys. Don't move. Once you follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash golf guys, you will get alerts every time we go live. And we're doing it every couple weeks. Facebook.com slash golf guys. 